growing up. I was never bored. When I got home from school, uh, I dropped my, my bag and off into the woods I'd go. Never bored, always played outside. <laughs> Even then, I would uh, clean up the woods, pick up sticks and pack them, you know, and always just cleaning and, and caring for the woods because I'm drawn to the land and caring for it, yeah. Bear River is pretty wild. Very beautiful place around here. Pretty spectacular. It's a sharing community for sure. Yeah, sharing and inviting. Probably 10, 15, maybe 15 years ago, uh, our house burnt down. Pretty much lost everything. That's your, your whole life going up in flames, it would be very devastating. Yeah, I want to see the people protected. That's why I joined the wildfire prevention team. So yeah, back in 2018, a wildfire risk assessment was conducted by the Confederacy of Mainland Mi'kmaq in partnership with Nova Scotia Lands and Forestry. They were interested in doing some more emergency preparedness with our First Nation communities and wildfire was on one of the top of their lists. And then it was decided that we kind of have to pick a pilot project or a community to start with. So Bear River was chosen to partake in the Mi'kmaq Wildfire Prevention Project. There are a lot of factors that are looked at. Well, Bear River is one of our smaller communities, but it's located on a hill. The fire is more likely to spread going and moving faster uphill. There's how close the community is to the tree lines. Like there's lots of vegetation around, lots of forestry within that community. There have been previous fires in the past. Most of the community is on well systems. We don't have different ways to put out the fire if a fire were to occur. They have the new insect that's impacting the hemlock trees. Once these trees get diseased and sick and die, it increases the chance of fire spreading faster. We are seeing in Nova Scotia more extended periods of severe drought due to climate change. Wildfires will become more prevalent in this region. And also, you know, the community wants to be proactive in this instead of reactive because they knew that this was something important. They had a great interest in reducing wildfire risk within their community and they wanted to make improvements to different areas. But this project isn't just something you just do on a whim. It really takes understanding what the community's capacity is for these initiatives. Things aren't gonna go as planned, um, but that's okay, because wildfire doesn't go as planned. The first step is really that engagement piece. So it's really important to sit down with the community, chief and council, community stakeholders, and also the community members to really hear what the concerns are really want it to be community focused. And we had several uh, gatherings where we just uh, had a booth set up and we had prevention materials. Getting in fire trucks and a helicopter also brings the attention to the community. This is cool, isn't it guys? So we've talked to some of the residents about reducing risk around their homes. So yeah, basically any fires are planned is just good. We always make sure we have stuff for kids to do. You want a bracelet? Colorful bracelets. But there's also reading materials, comic books and things like that. Show me your stuff. Woo! So again, that all goes back to our wanting to raise awareness to everyone in the community. They put out a notice to see if, you know, if anybody was wanting to sign up to have your house assessed for wildfire prevention. Of course, I quickly signed up and said, yes, come to my home. We conduct fire smart home assessments to uh, evaluate what it is in their home or their yard that they could change to increase the safety of their property, their home, their family. What's within the 10 to 30 meter radius from your home? Where are we keeping our wood pile? Cleaning out their gutters more frequently? just so that there's not debris build up. The types of trees, especially softwood, making sure that they're pruned up a certain level. A lot of it's just trying to keep a lot of clutter away from your house. 
so that if there was a wildfire, you don't have anything that can burn along the ground and creep up to your house, so. Fire Smart also lays out different types of plant species that can help reduce fire risk that you can plant around your home. And tulips were one of them. Very cool. All right, let's go plant it. Yeah, what is it going to make? So tulips hold like a large moisture content. They don't encourage the spread of fire. So we decided to plant tulips around the community's cultural center and had the youth come out and help us plant. Good job. Visually seeing that that is working was really positive. Good morning, everybody. Very honored to be here today in Bear River South. So we've done like different types of trainings and workshops. The first part of it is in classroom learning, learning about fire behavior. So when it comes to wildfires, we have to prioritize things. How you tackle a fire, how do we approach it? Always our, our number one priority will be human life. They learned about how fire interacts with all different features. The west is usually considered drier because it's getting the sun during the hotter time of the day. Learn about the weather. High relative humidity is almost as good as a rain. Different types of suppression methods. And how fire will spread really fast. Everybody convinced that fire moves faster uphill than it does downhill? If you don't believe me, take a match, light it, hold it upside down and... <laughs> At every opportunity, we like to engage community members and increase their knowledge. And education is a big part of this project. Not engaging, it's an acceptable decision. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, if you think people are going to get hurt, we can rebuild homes, you know, we can replant trees. We can't replace people. So when you do go to start it, you know, there's an on-off toggle switch. Make sure it's in the on position. And the second part of the classroom session that is the hands-on with the tools and equipment needed to put out the fire. Really not a lot of work to it. I'm just guiding it along. Oh, my favorite activity today was the hoses, the different hoses, different sizes, different hookups. So, you ready? They're going to be able to go out and use the forest fire equipment. Here we are. Work as a team to suppress the fire in a safe manner. Whoa. Oh, yes, it's very exciting. I love it. Good job. So what's in the way, in your opinion? Yeah. Oh, these two, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I'd say actually there's three right there. Community members have the chance to get certified in chainsaw and tree felling so that they'll be able to keep their own properties maintained. Learning how to clean chainsaws, how to maintain chainsaws. Just list the nine safety features on, on the software. So you got chain, rocket in front. So that community members are equipped to take those trees out themselves versus hiring someone to come in and do that. You put that back in the cut. Yeah. You take it easy and slow and do it properly. You can take a tree that leans way back and bring that forward and drop it right where you want to put it. Nobody likes to hear the word cutting a tree, right? Because we all love our forests and we love wildlife. But when it comes to a wildfire passing through, that can impact the home and how a fire spreads to the structures. You know, what can we do now to reduce uh, the risk of fire spread because of how close we are to the forest stand? So we focused on the major structures within the community, places where people would congregate and get together. We want to make sure they had proper clearances around them. We're actually going to take all the prevention that we can, cut a fire break around our reserve, we're creating a 15 meter break in the woods so that if a fire is to ignite outside of the community, it'll slow it down because it'll be more of a hardwood stand. The fire won't pass through as fast. The street signs, they weren't originally planned as part of the project. Before those signs were there, I wasn't even aware of where some of the roads were. Then we thought, well, how can we help them? I like the Mi'kmaq writings underneath it. They're bright and mostly helps firefighters figure out where they're going on a call. You know, we can coexist with wildfire, but we have to make sure that the communities are prepared in case a wildfire does come through. We'd like each of the eight mainland Mi'kmaq communities to participate in wildfire prevention and fire smart initiatives. 
create that bit of a spark in their minds that this is something they can participate in themselves. Then it builds a better sense of community and that everyone's taking in that initiative. Our community is fortunate. It just makes you feel safer. I love it too, yeah. Bear River's always been right there, ready to try something new. For community, we stick together. It's a good feeling.